Before I tell you a little story, uh, could I ask you a question? What does it mean if Jesus Christ is Lord of your life? Does it mean that he makes recommendations and uh, after you've examined the options, you pick one? Does it mean that he's an advisor, that you plan things out and then he helps you tweak them into uh, something that is more acceptable? Or, or does it mean that you give him all the options and then he decides? See, I, I think the words of Mary at the wedding at Cana are very telling. This is John chapter 2 and verse 5, where she said, his mother said to the servants, whatever he says to you, do it. Now, it seems to me that that's the happy way. The Lord Jesus made a shocking statement one day. He said, you want to be friends with me? If you, if you want to be my friend, then you'll do whatever I say. Now, normally that would not be the arrangement of a friendship, right? I'll be your friend. Here's the deal. Whatever I say, you do it. And then we'll get along just fine. However, if the person who says that happens to be the creator of the universe, the one who put your brain together and designed your heart and knows exactly what fulfills you, why you were made in the first place, and in fact has all resources and all wisdom and has all facts at hand, then of course it would be madness not to want what he wanted. He was the one who said to his father, not my will, but yours be done. If he could do that, then surely the secret of the blessed, happy, fulfilled, purposeful life is giving God all the options. So let me tell you a little story. One day my phone rang and it was a, a young lady who had been the manager of a restaurant here in town at the, at the university. And I had met her when I had a book table there. I'd go around and talk to her, hand out choice cleanings, calendars and books and so on, books for their kids. And uh, we became good friends. And she, she was a lovely believer. Well, the same chain decided to build another restaurant at the other end of town, down near the Walmart. And uh, she was going to be transferred there as the manager. So she called me and said, there's a man of God who is overseeing the construction of this restaurant. I want you to meet him. And so I said, okay. And uh, I got in my car and I drove down there. But when I got there, she wasn't there. She'd been called away to something else. And they were still working, finishing the building. So I walked in the door and here were different people working and wasn't quite sure what to do. But I just said, is there a man of God here? And there was a fellow sitting over at a table with a couple of computers, and he said, are you Mr. Nicholson? So obviously, she had already pre-introduced me uh, to him, and so I went over and sat down, and uh, his name was Clay Worthy, which is one of the most wonderful names for a Christian, <laughs> uh, the, the one who is taken from the clay and who is made worthy by the wonderful ministry of Christ in shaping us into a vessel fit for the master's use. He told me a story that he had had a construction business near Phoenix, built houses, and then with the downturn of the economy, he had to shut down the business. And he couldn't find a job. He looked and looked and couldn't find a job. And one day an old man came to him and said, have you ever gone into your closet, got down on your knees, and given God all the options. And he said, well, no, I haven't. He said, it'll change your life. Well, he kind of wrestled over this for a bit. He wasn't quite sure that he wanted God to exactly have all the options. And um, finally he did. He got down and he said, Lord, here's my life. You've got all the options. Within a short time, he received a phone call from a man who oversaw the construction of restaurants and uh, a particular kind of restaurant and said, I'd like to hire you. And he said, well, you know, I haven't really done commercial construction. And he said, well, I'm not hiring you 
for your skill. I'm hiring you for your character. And so he began overseeing the construction of this line of restaurants across the country. Well, after a little while, you know, he, he, at the time he thought, well, this is kind of strange. I give God all the options and he wants me to build restaurants. <laughs> it just seemed a bit unusual, but he carried on faithfully and he, he was the best employee he could be. Well, um, after a bit, they started to build another line of restaurants, the restaurants that I'm referring to here that this lady was a manager of, owned by a Chinese couple who I think are Buddhist, um, liberal, left coast uh, sort of folks. And uh, they're very wealthy. They own all of these restaurants. I don't think they franchise them. I think they wholly own all the restaurants. And uh, so he began building these restaurants as well. Eventually, the owner of those restaurants came to his boss and said, I want to hire away Clayworthy to work just for me. And so Clay's boss called him in and said to him, look, you're the best employee I've got. I never have to worry about what you're going to do. But, you know, I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let you go and work for this man because I believe God has sent you to be a missionary to that organization. And so he began working for this, this Chinese man and his wife. Well, as time went by, they were called to have a, a retreat at this beautiful resort. I think it was in Colorado. They went out there. All the upper management were there. And, um, of course, I'm sure they talked about a lot of things. But at a certain point in the retreat, the, the lady, uh, the co-owner of the business, got up and explained, you know, every year we select a theme for the family of employees. And uh, it's your responsibility as upper management to weave this into the culture of the company. And uh, this year, the theme is going to be living the new life. She said, I wonder if there's anyone here that you could make a recommendation as to how you might weave this into your talks with the employees. No hands. Finally, Clay put his hand up. And she said, yes, yes, would you like to come up? And he said, well, it's about Jesus. Oh, that's fine. Sure, that's fine. Come on up. And so he went up and, uh, and he, he explained how he had come into the new life, how he had trusted Christ as his Savior, and what a dramatic change had occurred in his life because of this. He looked at money differently. Money was not a way to win the game. Money was simply a tool to accomplish good in the world whether providing for his family or helping others, advancing the good cause in the world. That's how he looked at it now. He looked at his work differently. He was no longer trying to be a men pleaser, a pleaser of those who are watching him. He was seeking to please God. And therefore, he wanted to be the best employee he could be all the time. It changed how he looked at customers. They weren't simply a means to his wealth. They were actually made in the image of God. And so he wanted to communicate that dignity, that intrinsic dignity that they had because they'd been made in the image of God. And so he went explaining how this new life that he had received transformed the way he thought about business and other people and money and so on. Well, you know, he said from that point on, throughout the year, he had the permission of this organization to sit down across from any employee and ask them, have you come into the new life yet? And explain to them how they could, just as he had. Well, another year went by, and they had another one of these retreats at another uh, lavish resort. Everyone was there, all the upper management. And um, the owner hadn't learned her lesson, obviously. And so she got up again and 
and announced that there was a new theme for the coming year. It was living on a higher plane. And she said, I wonder, is there anyone here uh, who would uh, be able to share with us how we could incorporate that into the life of the organization? And so here he was. You know, often we hear these stories about people who commit themselves to the Lord. They always end up overseas with a pith helmet, you know, in the jungle, <laughs> on a mission field somewhere. But, but God has lots of options. You know, he's not boring. He doesn't have a one-track mind. And I think sometimes we think, well, if I give God all the options, that's what's going to happen. But God said, no, Clay, I want to place you as my servant, as my representative in this organization. So be encouraged. I would say that the dramatic shift in my own life came when I was preaching that message to a bunch of preachers. And I said, we're not going to see revival in America until we give God all the options. And riding home from the conference, the Lord said to me, that was a good point, Nicholson. You never gave me all the options. And so there was a great wrestling in my life. It probably took two years. Surely the Lord's going to let me start a local church where we go, or surely he's going to let me use my teaching gift. He wouldn't let me put anything on the page. And you know, it's been the most exciting chapter of my life when the Lord has all the options. Be encouraged, Christian, and take the words of Mary, whatever he says to you, do it.